You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Productivity, winning strategies, and aligning employer-employee goals. If this sounds like something your business could use more of, then you've come to the right place. The Business Mechanic Show with your host, Vaughn Sigmund. Let Vaughn show you how to develop, improve, and jumpstart your business. So now, please welcome the host of The Business Mechanic, Vaughn Sigmund. Welcome to The Business Mechanic Show here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hope all is doing well today. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, and I've got a, a nice show package up for you today on a, a topic that I think a lot of you can benefit from. So I'm going to share a little more experience and knowledge and technique with you that I, I so enjoy doing, and the feedback that you are all giving me is, is really appreciated. I uh, appreciate the responses, and uh, if anybody's listening to this for the first time, I'm a business coach, professional development trainer. I work uh, all across the nation. I, uh, when I work outside of my home base here in Southern California, I do it virtually, and that works very, very well. Uh, I use uh, Zoom meetings for that, and it's just like we're sitting in the same room together. It's fantastic. So I've got um, uh, all kinds of programs between coaching and sales management training, high-impact management training, and alignment that I offer everybody. If you're interested, please visit my website at vsigmund.com. Get in touch with me. would love to be able to chat with you. Today's topic is creating and managing successful action plans. So getting results from your team requires more than just great ideas, great goals, great strategies. It requires creating great action and project plans, collectively referred to as action plans from here on out. And then managing those action plans to bring them to the desired results. I think most everybody's familiar with action plans. But the action plans I'm going to be talking about today are written plans that shows what needs to be done in order to accomplish a strategy for achieving a specific goal. Or in other words, who is going to do what by when. And one of these, the, one of the things that separate most less effective managers or executives from what my program calls high impact managers is these less effective managers tend to get things done by the seat of the pants. And oh, how I was that manager for for a while, and the painful lessons I can I can share with you are, are pretty long list. But fortunately, early on, I learned what not to do. And I'm going to share with you some of my lessons from way back when that I learned how important it is to have these action plans and the strategies, the tactics, the three steps, the three-step process in place that I'm going to share with you today. Without these three steps, working for you, disciplined by you, implemented by you, Every single time you've got a, a, a goal or a mission you need to accomplish, you are severely, severely curtailing how likely it is to get accomplished and the, the level of which it will be accomplished. And again, I've got some painful lessons. So once I learned these three steps and adopted them, I'll, I'll share with you today how my career shot through the roof. And thank God I learned it pretty early. So in contrast, 
when we're talking about less effective versus high impact managers, the the contrast with the high impact managers is that they have the habit, they've ingrained the habit of creating and managing action plans with a disciplined follow through and timely approach with adjustments that are anticipated because nothing ever goes the way you plan. So it's, 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 you know, you say God laughs, uh, uh, making sure you have the follow through the milestones, being willing to make the adjustments along the way that bring about high impact results. Disciplined is the key word here because these three steps are structured in a way that works when the steps are followed. When you have that discipline in place and you do it every single time, action plans need to be developed and managed by man, by managers and executives at all levels in a, in a company, whether they impact the entire organization or they impact any other part of it, such as a, a team or a department or a division. All the, what I'm going to talk about today, these action plans, every level of management, supervisory of any sort, anybody that's, even if it's one person that's expected to get a project accomplished, they've got to follow these three steps. And as a manager or executive, you may be assigned a specific action plan. However, in most cases, you probably won't be involved in all the steps from creating, making, implementing this action plan. But you have to manage it. And you're going to paint this, this structure I'm going to talk to you about today, the three steps, will allow you to know what to manage. You'll have a very clear path, as will the people who are expected to go accomplish this action plan. They'll know exactly what's expected of them, which is the single most important element a manager must convey to their team. It's, I know what's expected of me. And that's one of the beauties of this. It's a side benefit as you continue to provide a very needed element to the engagement of your team that creates a lot of success. And in order for plans to succeed in achieving the mission, you've got to have these three steps in place. So I'll refer to the, this action plan responsibility as the responsible party instead of the manager executive and using a bunch of words, I'm just going to talk about responsible party the person who's responsible for getting this done, getting this action plan done throughout the rest of the, my show today. So let me take you through leading up to some of these, uh, to these, these three steps. So every action plan will have tactics, which collectively need to take place in order to bring about the success of the action plan. So you got action plan, you got tactics and strategies that go into the action plan. And you, the responsible party, are, are, are missioned with carrying out the tactics yourself or delegating that task or these tasks to your subordinates, your direct reports, or tactic implementers. And then you've got to manage their actions and your activities throughout it. In today's program, I'm going to share with you the principles and techniques that high impact managers use to create and manage their action plans to successful results. You will achieve what you want to achieve faster and better. I guarantee you if you utilize these steps. And we're going to go to break here for a couple minutes. And when we come back, I'm going to share with you a, a, some common scenarios so you can relate to what I'm talking about. I want to paint a really clear picture for you of what maybe is and what it can be using these three steps. So I'll look forward to speaking with you after we come back from break. We'll be right back. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. 
Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Welcome back to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund. We're out live right now on TuneIn Radio. Appreciate everybody listening. So today we're talking about action plans and how to properly get stuff done around your organization. So let, let me share with you what I'm talking about. Here's, here's what I often see within the organizations when I start with them, when they bring me in to help them start putting things together and be uh, and create a high impact culture within their organization, I'll sit in on meetings, and this is the common scenario I see very often. And they uh, they're they're, good, they're generally pretty good about having meetings. They have management meetings or executive meetings, and um, very often they're there. And there's there's some things they need to talk about. There's a critical project. There's a product launch or a website that needs to be done or there's um, uh, sales that need to be improved. We've got to figure out how to improve business or profit. But they're talking about something that's critical to the company. And the, this management or executive team knows that they have to get something accomplished or get something implemented. And everyone goes around the table, talks about what has to be done. And they talk about how hard some things are going to be and – and you know, sometimes there's some disagreement about what steps they should take and, and, and when they should take them and whether they're necessary and when the project's going to get completed and what's realistic. And then to make this a bit shorter, and, it, it, and I've seen this so many times, this meeting ends up being a long discussion. It's just a nice conversation everybody has. Some of the participants may, 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 they may feel really good about the meeting because they got their points across. And there's others that have sat there and said, Jesus, we've been talking about this for weeks. Nothing's happening. Why am I here? And those others, they've got things to do. And because nothing's being accomplished in this meeting, there's nothing actionable taking place during this meeting. They're just checking out. And as the group is wrapping up, Everybody packs up and gets out of there and goes on the rest of their day. And what was accomplished in this meeting? It was, again, a really nice discussion. And how much closer was this group of executives or managers to getting the project completed? Well, they're not much closer. They'll come back next week and they'll go through the whole thing again. And another week went by without starting the project and or the action plan, and, and we all know that they're probably talking about something that has a, a higher level of priority, and it needs to get accomplished, but 
But all at this point we're doing is spinning our wheels and talking about it. Or, or the second outcome that, that, that's sometimes I've seen this happen a lot is that the, there's individuals in the meeting and says, well, I'm tired of waiting on everybody else. I'm going to go get started on my part of it. And they go out and get started. However, without specifics, without the three steps that I'm going to talk about today, without the specifics and the timelines understood, the outcome of what that individual is out there working in their silo on may or may not be what needs to be done in the order of which it needs to be done. And worse yet, they're going to get going, look around, see no one else is doing their part. And I've seen this happen a hundred times. That person that's, that's taken the initiative, I'm tired of waiting on you guys. I'm just going to go get my part done. Then a month or two into it, they look around. Nobody else is, is doing their part or they've run up against some walls. There's no help. There's no alignment around this. They just throw up their hands and they stop doing it. And they just go move on to other less critical duties, leaving this whole action plan lay, lay dormant with nothing being done to it. And this, I got to tell you, can and often does lead to some degree of frustration on the team's part. Not only the, the management team, but the, uh, the team that is reporting to the managers, especially this manager, got everybody worked up and, and got them going on a project just to let it die. It's very frustrating to the employees that are reporting to this person. It creates a, a level of animosity and dysfunction. So there's, there's unintended consequences from a, an engagement standpoint within your organization, if you don't structure and discipline yourself to do it the way I'm going to share with you today. So how should this meeting be structured? Glad you asked. I'm now going to share with you the three mandatory steps to getting a project accomplished faster and better every time. Here are the three steps, and I'm going to go into some detail on each three of them throughout the rest of the show to give you some real specifics on how, what this is, why you do it, how to implement it. So step one. Step one is i got to create an action plan. What, what has to get done? What is the project? What is the mission that has to be done? So we're going to create an action plan. And the second step after creating that action plan is you're going to create tactics or all the steps that must be completed along with timelines. And I'm going to go into a little bit of depth on the depth on these timelines a little bit later, but I'll just give you a hint right now. That timeline part is the part I see missed more than anything else, and it allows projects to wither and die and not get done. So timelines, putting a date to something. It's critical. And then step three is managing those action plans to success. So I'm going to share details, some instruction on all three of those steps when we come back from this, this brief commercial break. I know you guys are ready to hear it. We'll be right back. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. 
Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Welcome back to the Business Mechanics Show live here on BBM Global Network and tune in radio. Later on, we'll be posted as a podcast to iHeart and Spotify and iTunes. Really thrilled about all that. Really appreciate everybody listening and downloading the show. Please, if you if you like one of my shows and think there's somebody you know that would enjoy or benefit from it, please forward it to them. I, uh, I enjoy the feedback and the comments people are making with me. So thanks for all of that. Today we're talking about creating and managing action plans and how to get stuff done around your organization. I just shared with you the three steps that are critical and mandatory that you have to be disciplined about in order to get your action plans accomplished. And they've got to be followed. They are creating action plans, creating the tactics around the action plans, and then managing the action plans. It sounds really simple. Yeah, it's a little harder than that. All three have to... All three have to happen. It cannot be a la carte. You can't take just one of these or two of these. It's all three of those. So got it? Three steps. In the, in the order that I'd explain them, followed and implemented for the best outcome, the best outcome you need or the best outcome you expect. So step one, creating action plans. To create an action plan, you first, of course, have to identify an objective. What you want to get achieved. And that leads to a strategy that in turn leads to achieving specific goals. So after creating an action plan, you will then include specific tactics or tasks. And I'll talk more about tactics later, which need to be completed to achieve the action plan. So let me give you an example. A company strategy to construction website, can you construct a website for a new product might have multiple action plans. Each action plan may be finding a new web designer, and that could involve a number of tactics, like James will research and decide on which five web designers to interview by June the 20th, or who will do what by when. And even more to this point, we're going to talk about my, my favorite thing, one of my favorite things. I've got a lot of favorite things. But that's a smart goal. And it's actually important that that smart goal is contained in almost every step of the way. Using this one step of assigning smart goals. That alone makes the biggest impact in turning around teams more than anything else I train professionals on. Put a date to something. I, it's just, I, I can't tell you how many times I've sat with people and we've talked and we've talked. We're doing annual strategy sessions. And we talk and we talk and we talk. And I finally have to stop the conversation as the facilitator and say, okay, who's going to do this? When can you get it done? And it stops everybody. And well, I, I think that's my responsibility. Okay, when can you get it done? Oh, I, I think I can get it done in three months. Okay, good. So you're going to get this done by this date, right? Right. And now this thing's taking on some activity. We're finally getting somewhere. That's all this really is. 
It's the one thing alone gets gets left out of these meetings is that I talked about earlier is let's just get started. Who's going to do what by when? But specifically, get that date on it. I cannot tell you assigning timelines. Not only what we're going to do, but by when are we going to get it done? Who, what, when? Who's responsible? And when will it be done? Because believe me, in my 40 years of managing people, a job expands to the time allotted. And if you don't allot a time to a job or a responsibility or a strategy, it can go in perpetuity in some cases. I, I know one company that's talked about creating a series of sales training videos. This was their action plan. They were going to create sales training videos that everyone in the company agrees is critical to improving sales in the company. And yet, and they're not my client, I just have a friend that works there. Yet two years later, the videos aren't done. They're still talked about on a regular basis. However, nothing's been done with them other than a discussion. Do you have projects like that? Do you have things that you've wanted to get done, really important things that you feel are, are critical and important to your company, and they're still just kind of talked about and nothing's been done with them? Yeah, I think everybody does. I, 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 I have a lot of those in my career. There's a lot of them out there uh, that are in your lives, in my clients' lives. And what I'm talking about today will actually get some stuff moving for you. The problem is, is, is once you've talked about the same thing for an extending period of time, and all, all that's been done is talk about, you run the risk that just, you know, again, people just throwing off their arms, hands, and saying, eh, I'm done with that. I'm tired of talking about it. Nobody's going to do anything about it. And that just creates a lot of frustration. You may be missing out on an element that is a game changer in your organization. So that's where the discipline comes from. If you'll, you'll take these three steps into mind, discipline yourself to every time you, you're talking about an action plan, something needs to get done, a project that needs to be accomplished, and you implement these three steps every time, man, what a game changer this is. So let me talk about the SMART criteria, which is critical to all this. SMART, which is an acronym for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, who the responsible party are, are, are is, responsible parties are or is, and then the single most important ingredient is a specific timeline. So let me talk about each element, specific. It's got to be clear as to what is expected to take place from the plan. That's the specific. For example, a commitment to having a certain project Mostly ready by the end of the year. That's not specific. Because really, what is mostly ready? It needs to be written as to exactly what will be done. So, for example, that same project that was mostly ready should be 100% complete by December the 31st. There should be no ambiguity as to what needs to be achieved by the action plan. When we come back, I'm going to talk about, we're going to go to a commercial break. When we come back, I'll talk about the rest of the details around SMART goals. Don't miss it. We'll be right back. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands 
thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This year's your happy host, Vaughn Sigmund. We're talking about action plans, three steps to getting stuff done effectively around your company. So we're going through SMART goals. We talked about the S in the SMART. The next letter in the acronym is measurable, M. So the, the results from your action plan must be able to be measured we got to have a score on this. And these measurements must be clear and objective so that you'll know whether or not you're on target. So, for example, if your action plan is to increase your revenue by a certain amount of, of sales or by a certain percentage, you must know, A, your current revenue, how much you, you uh, the, the current revenue and what the results in the past have been, so that you can do some projections on this action plan to see what specifically you want your revenue to be in the future. So, and if you, it, this also allows you, when it's measurable, it, it clear, obviously it gives you a clear understanding of whether you're achieving what you need to be achieving. And if you're not, you need to make the adjustments. Something in the, in your strategies is just not working, not as well as it should be. So do we need to put more people on it? Do we need to take a different path? But we we need something that's going to measure us to give us feedback as to how well we're doing on this action plan. The A in SMART is achievable. Is it realistic? Is there, does this really have a realistic chance of success? Because being achievable is related to the availability of certain resources, such as funding, staffing, equipment, all the elements that are, are needed for achieving the action plan. Now, achievability is important. If you, if you create a plan that is almost impossible or you don't have the resources to get it done, to get to achieve it, your, your team's just not going to support you. It's going to it's going to die on the vine, and worse, even worse, long term, it's going to harm your credibility. So, don't shortcut this one. Is this really achievable? Can we get this done? Do we have the resources, the time, the people to get this done, or are we willing to commit the resources to get this done? And the R in the SMART goal is the responsible party. The responsible party is the one who is charged for driving the plan to fruition. And so for purposes of this program, I'll, I'll assume that the person who is the responsible party for an action plan has both the authority and the responsibility for creating and implementing the action plan. And this may be you. 
but you might occasionally delegate this responsibility, and that's okay too. But you're the one that's ultimately responsible. You got to get it done. If you delegate steps or pieces or the whole thing to somebody else, you're still the responsible party for getting this done. And understand if it doesn't get done, you're the one that's got to make the steps or take take the, the fallback, blowback for it not getting done. You're going to make the decision. You're going to, you're going to help create the tactics the needed tactics to, to make this action plan succeed. You're going to decide who to delegate it to tactic to a tactic, each tactic to a tactic implementer to the person you delegate it to. And as this responsible party, you may also be required to give updates, of course, as to the status of the action plan to, to the boss, to the higher level manager executive or the executive team. And this responsible party of an action plan must have the authority as well as the responsibility to delegate and assign tactics. And there may be times when you assign yourself as the best person to complete this tactic. So you got some decisions to make in all this. You got time management in there. You've got to understand your people and their abilities and their skills. You've got to understand the pressures, the um, unintended consequences that may occur make, when you make some of these decisions. You got to think it through. And it's okay to assign some of these tactics to your subordinates or outside sources. You may go to a third party vendor to get some of this done. But you're the responsible party. It really serves two purposes. One, you got the best person going to get it done. You know, they're the, the most skilled and able to achieve this. And by pulling them out of that department, putting them into your department, getting this done, not only are you putting the best person on the job, you're exposing this, this person to new responsibilities. They're going to gain uh, additional knowledge. They become more cross-functional in their abilities. And you've just expanded the, the value of that employee for your organization tremendously. So it's a really great tactic. Don't, don't, get, don't get siloed out if it can only be your people. If it's, if it's someone else on the team that is really sharp and can get this done, you achieve re two really good things if you do that. So don't, don't get hung up on it being just one person on your team or a couple people on your team. I hope that made sense. And then the T in SMART goal is time frame. And again, deadlines, assigning a date is the one step I see missed more than anything else. We can talk about who's going to do it, why we're going to do it. We'll go out and get it started. But without this date as to when this stuff has to get done, it just keeps going on and on and on. And we miss deadlines or we don't anticipate things going wrong. And it just creates dysfunction in an organization. That's, and this is such a critical piece of it. Is it if you follow these three steps in, in getting things done, your action plans accomplished around your organization, it eliminates a ton of dysfunction and confusion in the organization. So... Creating a realistic time frame has got to be established when the objective of the action plan is created. And that time frame also has benchmarks along the way. You've got to see where it's going. If it's a year-long project, we need to see where it is in 90 days, six months, nine months. If it's a if it's a 30 day project, we need to check in each week to see where it stands, because if something's falling behind. Now we know we either extend the project, put more people on it, change some kind of strategy within it to get this done in this timeline or extend the timeline. But we don't want to wait until it's supposed to be done and be surprised, negatively surprised that this deadline did not get hit. So. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, I'm going to go into a little bit more depth 
on these tactics. Don't miss it. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're live right now. Later be put on Spotify, iHeart, iTunes, Lipson, Podbean, a bunch of other places out there, Facebook, LinkedIn. Appreciate everybody's support and listening to the show. We're talking about action plans today and how to get them implemented and accomplished. So just finish up on timelines and certainly timelines – apply to anyone you delegate any of the tactics to the tactic implementers and certainly the responsible parties here's a critical part of this is when you're going to bring in others other than yourself to be responsible for accomplishing this you got to collaborate with them you got to get buy-in you got to get their input input you got to make sure that it's all realistic in their minds. You may be missing some critical steps along the way that you didn't think of, that these people can, can add value. Your direct reports can add value to getting this, this action plan accomplished. So when you're creating action plans, here is my very strong recommendation. You can start with the management team or the executive team. Move it down to the next level, but get as many people involved and get as many opinions as you can, because it's the, generally it's going to be, or very often it's going to be, frontline employees who have a strong hand in getting this done. And without their input, you're not going to get the, in, uh, the, the buy-in from them. And without that buy-in, you're not going to get the execution or the productivity that you need to get this done in a timely manner. So getting this collaboration, that's a whole nother show. You can look it up. I uh, did it a few months back. It, it, without that collaboration, you're missing out on some, some jet fuel to get this done. So action plans and tactics. They often include outside dates, drop dead dates, always with milestones. Milestones got to be completed, and it's it's really smart to to break these action plans up into smaller bites, so that you know this is going to get done by this, this is going to be to get done by when, and then it all adds up to the big project or the big action plan getting done. But you've got to have these drop dead dates, and these drop dead dates have to be agreed to for each action plan and tactic. And more importantly, 
but don't not leave this out. You need to create and include a small cushion period to allow for unexpected occurrences. This this cush time is really important because almost never does everything happen when it's planned to happen. You want to hear God laugh? Tell him your plan. Especially, especially if you're dealing with third party providers. Yeah, if you if you need material, I just went through this with a one of my clients, one of my long term clients, new new product going out. They were planning it up to everything was falling right in to the right timeline. And it man, we were bumping right up against ship date. And I convinced them. I told him a story. I won't tell it to you guys, but I told him a story about how I got burned at expecting everything to work perfectly. And you need to build a couple of weeks worth of cushion to this before you start advertising, committing those resources, telling the sales team that you're going to launch this product. So because in this case, after they put the cush time in, of course, the uh, one of the one of the uh, material providers, they shipped the wrong material. And when I say wrong, it was uh, it was defective material. They got it there on time, but the product itself was not up to standard. It wouldn't work. And it took another week to get a reshipment. The manufacturer had to remanufacture everything, get it shipped. And, of course, they're clear across the country. You could get storms. Events happen that can slow things down. You just can't anticipate so build yourself some cush time in any of your timelines. Make sure you don't take something right up to a drop dead date. Give yourself a little, little room. So let me give you a story of developing an action plan to bring all this together. An executive, he was a vice president of an organization. He created a goal of increasing the company sales about 20% during the next year. He brought everybody together and he discussed this goal with the sales manager of the organization. And this VP and the sales manager, they agreed to a strategy of adding what one of the things was going to have to happen is they needed to add sales staff. In order to achieve these desired sales levels, they're going to need to add salespeople. So the executive vice president asked the sales manager to be the responsible party for that strategy and create an action plan to hire salespeople. And that sales manager came up with the following questions and discussed it with his sales team. So you see now he's going down and collaborating with the sales team. And he discussed with them how many new salespeople we'll need to hire this year in order to achieve the sales increase. And remember that goal was 20% in the next year. And he discussed with the sales team what should be the minimum amount of sales that would be acceptable for each new salesperson. How much should they generate in the next year? What's realistic? What's achievable for each new salesperson? And based on the input that that sales manager got from his sales team, the collaboration with his sales team, the sales manager identified the following action plan from which he, he would be the responsible party and how it and notice how it follows the SMIKE criteria. So here's what he did. Within the next three months, the sales manager will add six new salespeople and eliminate the lowest performing salesperson of the current staff. Because that lowest person, lowest performing person was going to hold back in achieving that mission. So not only did he add, he needed to take away in order to add sales. Sometimes there is addition through subtraction. Going on, each new salesperson must generate a minimum of $250,000 in sales before the end of the year. So that's specific, it's, specific, it's measurable, it's, agree, it's, it's achievable, it's, we've got the responsible party, and we've got a timeline and all that. So 
That's what a smart goal sounds like. We're going to we're going to go to another commercial break. Tom is flying today. When we come back, I'm going to talk about some other little critical factors of going into the number of action plans you have and how much is realistic you could be managing at the same time. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to the Business Mechanic Show, live here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund. We're talking about action plans and the three critical steps to getting them accomplished. So let's add, let, let's let's go about some of the things that you need to be aware of and careful of. These are a, a few warnings I want to give you, because I know you guys are now you you you've got the information you need. You understand the three steps to getting action plans and, and missions and projects accomplished. Now here are the things you need to make sure you avoid. You want to limit the number of action plans you're managing or your company is managing to five or fewer and understand the smaller the infrastructure, the fewer the action plans. Because if you manage too many action plans at one time, the result will likely be that only some or possibly none will get executed very well. So limit yourself. Don't have too many uh, action plans and strategies going on out there. Second thing to always be aware of, each action plan needs a budget. So before you commit to an action plan, you need some idea what it's going to cost you. And do I have the budget to make this action plan succeed? Because if you don't have the money, it ain't going to happen. And the amount is 
the amount that needs to be budgeted is typically not known until after the tactics for the action plan has been identified. So you you got sometimes you're going to take this into step two before you realize, whoops, we don't got the we got the the narrows to make this happen. So make sure you're estimating the cost when you're working through the tactics of a plan and then decide on a go, no go. If in fact you can go afford it. So it's, it's real important to keep up with the financial information, what this is going to cost you. I listen, I implemented an action plan once in my career that was really successful, but I never considered budget. And I, I, grossly overspent, got my butt in big trouble for overspending because I, I did not determine a budget ahead of time. I went way over budget. And in my zealousness to get this thing done, uh, make sure you do that. Don't break the bank. Make sure you're planning your tactics. They break down into, um, uh, well, just make sure they're not overwhelming. You don't, there's a right amount and there's, there's too many. There's no limit to the number of tactics you could have, but make sure that you don't have too many of them. You got to be practical. You got to be, have practical constraints, understanding the ability of your organization, the infrastructure of your organization. And there's typically, there's going to be multiple tactics for each action plan. Keep that in mind, but there's no limit to the number of tactics in an action plan. Just be practical about them. And make sure you're doing regular updates and mile marker check-ins along the way. Like um, in 90 days, 120 days, six months, what's happening, where are we? All keeping in mind that SMART goal. So hopefully you guys... I picked up on some things that will help you get things done better and faster and more assuredly. I'd love for you to visit my website at thesigma.com. Follow me on LinkedIn, Vaughn Sigmund, the business mechanic. We'll be back on next week, same time, same station. I appreciate everything. You guys' support is, is valuable. And we'll talk to you next week. We're out of here. It's Vaughn Sigmund, the business mechanic. You've been listening to The Business Mechanic with your host, Vaughn Sigmund. If your business is in need of a good tune-up, let Vaughn get under the hood and put you on the right road to success on the next episode of Vaughn Sigmund's The Business Mechanic. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.